real nightmare. He wasn't kidding. I'm so smart. I want to weld this up. Y'all doing good? What was that? Pig ears. <laughs> Catastrophe right there. Too legit to quit. You did that? Worst case scenario. Hey! Huh? Go back to sleep. Yeah. So legit. Squeezy approved. Shirley. Pray hard. Hey, Granny. Oh, yeah. I think that pig. Recycling. You call nothing yet? Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> Catch a big one. The night stalker over here. We won't need that. You've got this. Woo! Yeah, you're getting it. Oh, wait. Kill this Nearly died. Oh, oh, oh. Touche, sir. Look at that jewel. No backup plan. <laughs> See how this goes. Woo! Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All the amenities of home. Tiffany. Yeah. He was hauling that. This plan's gonna work. Oh, wow. Steaming. Oh, yeah. George Jones? Whoa, whoa. He's on you. Oh, oh, whoa. oh. With the budget line. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sleeper Dude YouTube channel. We are back with our motorhome here. We got our mini Winnie Winnebago. It's a 1973. Is it 73? I, I think it's I don't know if that's real. I think it's 74. It may be 74. I think it's 74. That one's a 73. Or 72. The sticker over there says it's a 74. Well, my bad. So, if you haven't followed us with this, it's only like 19 feet long. It was a low mileage motor home, of course, but it had a lot of rot damage. We built the entire frame of this in the back ourselves. So, everything's been rebuilt. Fuel injected 5.9 liter Magnum motor run on Holly Terminator X. It's got a 46 RE overdrive transmission in it. So, all the latest amenities. Uh, it looks old, but it's actually new inside. But, unfortunately, we have a very, very bad oil leak on the engine. The last time you saw it, we put the Holly Terminator X on it. We drove it for like an hour. We lost like two quarts of oil. So, we snuck it on the lift just barely today. We're going to lift it up here and drop our oil pan, hopefully, and fix our oil leak. That's the plan, at least. It looks like it's going to be a really big job. we got some other little things we're probably going to tackle while we've got it up here. Let's get right into it and show you this leak. And it has a CV. Woo! Guys, this is the biggest announcement we've had since we opened our website and started selling our own products. We actually have four new products on the website. It just went live. We've got, it's just a little whiskey dent stickers. We finally have sleeper new keychains that glow in the dark. Yeah. Believe it or not. Can you believe that? Let's put it to the test. Whoa! Whoa Can you believe that? That's how, crazy. How incredible. I'm mesmerized. Whoa. How does it work? No I knows. Science. It's a mystery. Whoa. We also have Ralphie metal artwork now. Right now he's doing tractors. We got Wawa pencil drawings now. Yep. And of course, the tried and true Squeezy artwork. Yep. The biggest seller on our website last month. <laughs> Squeezy artwork. So at least somebody's making some money around here. You can go check it out at thesleeperdude.com. We also have hats, hoodies, other stickers, a few long sleeve shirts left, a few casing killer shirts that are on sale. So please go to thesleeperdude.com. It helps directly support our channel. We really appreciate it. Marge needs something to do during the day. So if you guys don't buy, I mean, she's, you know, it's not good. But you guys have been asking for products from the other kids. So here you go. You got some stuff from the other kids on the website now. So I hope you like our new products. Thanks for listening to our little spill here. Now let's get back to the video. Woo! 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 Do you think the wildfire is up to the task, Mom? I sure hope so. We have never had the RV on here before. We had to fold the mirrors in just a little bit because this thing is huge. But it's rated for 9,000 pounds and our gross vehicle weight on the sticker is 9,000. So. Huh. Not even straining, huh? Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna crank this bad boy up and show you our leak. <laughs> Got 70 pounds of oil pressure. So it's kind of hard to see on video, but basically the oil is running down from up here and dripping off the back of the oil pan right there. Best I can tell. See it dripping right there? But once this thing heats up, you can see it running from up here and going down. You can see the puddle we've already formed here. 
Now, I've actually worked on this engine a little bit trying to figure out where it was. I thought, well, maybe I left the pan bolts loose, but all the pan bolts are tight. So well, I guess let's see what we have to do to pull this pan off. I really hope it has nothing to do with the rear main seal because that would be a real nightmare. But it looks like this cross member here bolts in. If we have to, we can take this cross member out. Unfortunately, the engine bolts to that though. See, we've been wanting to take this thing on a trip, obviously, and we'd like to take our first trip in it somewhere that's not too crazy far off, you know. We have like three weeks until they're out of school for a week, so we're trying to see if we can fix this oil leak and other things we need to fix before then. What size is it, Ralph? Neither of the ones in my hand. Uh, 13, 16, 16. Look at all the oil on everything. Everything's got oil on it under here from the last time we drove it. I actually found a couple problems I drove it some more after the last video and it was like surging like it was running out of fuel and I was like getting really bummed out like oh man there's something wrong. I also noticed it was missing and I was like oh no. So I pulled the valve covers and we had one rocker arm that it backed off. So I just tightened it back down the mist went away and then come to find out it was out of gas. So put some gas in it. It's funny how they run better with fuel in them. I'm really hoping we can do this without it taking like a whole week to get this whole front end out of this thing. We've been tackling some big projects lately, and it'd be nice to have one that didn't kick our butt all week. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Glitter. Wait, have we ever changed oil since we put the new engine? Mm -hmm. I think so. It's thin, isn't it? <laughs> it has 70 pounds of oil pressure, but usually I don't change them when they're hot like this. I'm not really used to changing them hot. That's probably why it's so thin. I think these bolts are half inch to hold the oil pan on. It'd be nice if we just set it down. I wish it had more space. It looks like we only have like an inch and a half here. No chunks of piston coming out. That's a good sign, huh? Very good sign. One thing that's really puzzling me is this and the Gremlin have the same engine. The Gremlin literally has the engine we took out of this, which was the same basic engine. We put in the rear main seal and the oil pan gasket the exact same way. We did that one in a hurry the second time because we had a week to get to Moparty. So why is this one leak? Like, why couldn't that car have <laughs> leaked? It's a lot easier to pull the motor out of. It's real bummer when you do a bunch of work and then it didn't work out. There seems to be a reoccurring thing with this vehicle. Yeah. See, I also wondered too if we had bolts that were like topped out in the block, like they, you know, hit the end of the threads. Oh. And, but it doesn't seem to be because the oil pin doesn't appear to be loose or anything. I'm gonna leave like one bolt on each side, the easy spot to get to, and we'll take them out last. How are you gonna get it out? I'm gonna see how much we can drop it down. I know we can't get it out. See if there's anything we can work with with it drop down. If not, we're gonna to to take the whole front suspension out of it. Actually? Yes. Hmm. Let's either drop the whole front suspension out or pull the engine. Oh. What's wrong, Wall? Oh, that's, that's a lot of work. It's unfortunate, isn't it? <laughs> but the problem is, if we have to take this out, it holds the engine up. Oh. So we would have to support the engine either from the bottom or from the top. That's oh, like the wow, that's what you meant by it's gonna be a lot of work. Yeah, I don't know how much work it's gonna be. This is that's <laughs> I, I not important. I, I did not realize he wasn't that kidding. <laughs> yeah, I've been putting this video off for a while because of this reason. Because I don't know how the outcome's gonna be. Because my only real option is to just do the same thing I did last time and hope it doesn't leak this time. Are y'all ready to go camping this thing yet? Yeah. Yes. Very exciting. It's been such a long lead up to this. Yes. <laughs> it's been a long journey. Taking, you know, I get what? more excited as we go. This vehicle has been the most work we've ever put into anything. Don't I don't want to work on it until I start working on it. Yeah. And then I start to like it. Me too, yeah. Let's get loose. It's the last two. So what are the chances of this being like something extremely major? Uh, it could be a rear main seal. If that's true, it's going to be even harder. But I really don't want to crack into that rear main seal because yeah. I did the best I could on an engine stand upside down clean. Doing it like this, it's going to have even less chance of it actually working, you know? Oh. All right, all the bolts are out, I think. But I usually leave one, so it could be not true. Oh, Come on. see, we have a one piece rubber oil pan gasket. Why in the world would that leave? Okay. Oh, it's staying on that. See, that's all it can drop down, unfortunately. Oh, what? Yeah, look, there's a huge piece of metal here. Yeah, I see it from here, but... We should just slice and dice right there uh, because it would still be supporting the motor mounts. I mean, uh, do we really need all that? 
Don't tempt me. Like it's thick. Gosh, metal. that would be so much easier, wouldn't it? It would be so much easier. If you like, do that and then weld it back in. Yeah. <laughs> we should just do that. I'm so smart. Is that not a great idea? I don't know if it is or not. I don't know because it would still be on the motor mounts because those are more to the side, kind of. Yeah. That's my idea. <laughs> You can see I, I RTV to the corners. It looks like I RTV to around the front. The weird thing is the gasket looks fine. I don't get it. Uh, it just fought us on this. This one just fought us. Yes, it has. Well, I guess there's no need to delay the inevitable any longer. It looks like I'm going to have to drop the front cross member, which means unbolting the engine and all the front suspension out of this thing. While I'm doing that, do y'all want to work on the exhaust? Because we got to do that too. Yeah, yeah, sure. We got our stock tailpipe here, which appears to still be in decent shape. And we need it to meet up with our muffler. I do not like how low this muffler is pointed. I really don't know why it's pointed like that. Maybe so, we could push it up like that and then tack it yeah, in place. Yeah, we need to bend this up. It looks like it's just sag. So we need to get this up. If y'all want to figure out what size this is, get a piece that goes. It would be good if it would slide on the outside of it or inside, so it'd make a stronger joint. Okay, I'll measure it. I've never lifted anything this heavy with this jack either. It's just two inch. That's about like eight and a half, kinda. Keep going, it's like the same size. Oh, that's not gonna fit over it. No. This looks like it'll be big enough to go over. This is like two and a quarter, so it should go over just fine. Let's go. Yeah, I would overlap it probably a couple inches on each side because the more you overlap it, the stronger it's gonna be. I'm thinking about 12 okay. inches. You should be able to get that jack stand and push up on this. I think it's just sagged down because it has no mount. Wow, we're gonna have to add a mount here because this one's broke. I think we have some good ones around here. Probably about good right there. I love the hubcaps on this thing. Super. It's a big heavy one. Oh, oh. it's coming after me. Golly. Oh. We end up having to slice it because apparently this pipe and this pipe are basically the same size. We need to go up in there farther. You need to push from that in kind of. Yeah, it's going. How far did it go? That's a couple inches up in there. While you're trying to do that? Yeah, why don't you do this? Something like that. Okay. Well, that's a lot better, huh? Yeah. Here's that Carter pin. I hate doing like big truck suspension stuff. It's just the worst for me. I'm wire wheeling on this rusty pipe around here so it gets a good wheel. Dang, son, that thing's big. It is an inch and an eighth, I think. It's enormous. I think we have an Quarter. Yeah, we do. I hope these ball joints break loose easy. I want to weld this up. That rusty metal, sometimes you've got to let it sit there for a second and melt in, then it starts welding better. Once it burns that rust off, So I've got to break this big ball joint loose. So what I did was unthread the nut about halfway so it's still got a lot of threads still connected. With the spring pressure still on it, I'm going to whack this thing and see if it'll come loose. It popped loose off camera. Okay, let's see if this will pop loose. Oh, this one's being more stubborn. Come on. Golly. Did that go? No, it slipped off, didn't it? Oh, 
a lot going on over here next to that barrel. Yeah. Looking good. I got so annoyed with the other side, I'm just gonna take the shock loose on this side because we're gonna have to let this thing go full droop here to take the pressure off of it. So Wa has a school project, so she is cleaning up her car and gotta do some stuff to it for the school project. I think she's gonna buff it or something like that. How come I never got to clean my car up for a school project? I <laughs> know, exactly. <laughs> that was never a school project. No. So, I don't know if that shock was topped out or not. This way we know it's not limiting us on anything. I think I'm done. I did on tops too, so good job, bud. So I took the floor jack and got the pressure off of the ball joint nut. Took the nut completely off. Now we're gonna let this down slowly, get all that energy out of that spring, slowly. Well, unfortunately, it looks like I'm gonna have to take the rotor, backing plate, caliper, and all off for the lower controller to be able to swing down because if you look right here, it overlaps into where the rotor is. Sorry, I take all this back off. I hate redoing something I've done before. Right. Don't you guys hate that when you work on a project and you just got it done and then you gotta take it all back apart? Backtracking. That's why I sold the GTO. We rebuilt the motor, put it all together. Then the transmission was grinding because the guy didn't tell me the transmission was bad. Then mom drove it to LS Fest. The motor started losing oil pressure and I sold the thing. It looks like my truck on that thing's big. It is a big caliper for sure. It's got a lot to stop though. Yeah. What do you think about that? Look, still got brand new brake pads on there. Oh, we got plenty of grease too. They all run together. I can't remember which ones we greased and which ones we didn't anymore. Yeah. We gotta take this nut off here so we can get the rotor off. There we go. Keep these things clean. We don't want to like, get dirt and junk in them, do we? No. Covering brake dust, isn't it? Yeah. See, it just can't come down without that being out of the way. You did a spot on job on the exhaust rail. Yeah, very good. Thank you. See, this is the eventual goal. We need these kids to learn enough where I can just let them do a lot of these things, you know? I can just, uh, sit back and drink me an RC Cola while they work on, you know? Yeah. Y'all doing good? Something like that. Those are some donkey springs. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. So there's nothing here. holding them now except for this nut. Why'd you have to take that stuff off again? Because it hinges off of this, which is we gotta take this out. Okay. We're gonna try to go down slow and let the pressure off these springs. Oh. Just a little scary is all, because they're huge. At all? They're probably tapping and it'll fly. I think that's all the pressure it had, surprisingly. I was expecting that to be way more exciting, guys. Sorry. I'm still worried. Me too. <laughs> we'll probably like flick it and I'll go like across the shop. Well, we should be able to leave all the drag links and tie rods in place and the spindles. And this right here should be the only thing going with this. We just gotta get this ball joint to come loose now. We need the big fatty boy sledgehammer, I think, for this job. I got you. you got me? Thank you, sir. I am Thor. Mm. There you go. There Finally. Go. The other one popped a lot easier than that one did. You just made the power. That's right. Didn't have enough power, did I? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. Yeah. You don't smile at us much. got some big bearings, doesn't it? Yeah, I think you yeah. might have placed them. I may have, I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch my own videos to even know. What was that? Oh, what fell what out of there? Oh, dirt daubers. Them all dirt daubers getting everywhere. Well, they were spinning, weren't they? Yeah. I bet they took a ride. Oh, that hit me. <laughs> Went down my collar there. I really don't understand brake backing plates. Dust. Is it just for dust? And what about rocks? Like if a rock came in and squeezed in between your rotor and caliper, I mean, it'd be very unlikely, but who knows? I have left backing plates off before on my own vehicles. I believe that. I'll leave everything off. Yeah, I believe everything off. 
That wasn't too bad, huh? Come on. Boom! Oh, sorry. That is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> not funny. That was actually pretty funny. <laughs> Both of our lower ball joints feel super tight, so I don't think we have any issues there. Like I said, this thing didn't have a ton of miles on it. It just rotted in the back from water damage like most of these things do. We need to get the spring all the way out of there. We could lower it while we're doing this, you know? No. no. <laughs> it, it's an RV. I don't think you want me to pry on this and you try to get them out? What are you doing over here? John. That looks familiar. It does, doesn't it? I believe this is called like a strut rod. It basically holds the lower control arm in place. I gotta take it loose so that we can lower this arm down farther. Are you nervous, Marge? Yeah, a little bit. This Harbor Freight Jack's got us. Don't worry. Oh, shit. Oh, the Harbor Chin Chin Chin. Yeah. That's all you need. Will that come up off there now? Are you hunkered down, Marge? Yes, I'm hiding back here. What you worried about? There's so much grease on that. Stop popping up. Did you leave a bolt in it? No, uh, just the one. You leave it now. There we go. I feel like grease has caked up on that over the years. Mm. You can tell we greased it. No, we definitely have all the spring pressure off there because that's falling down out of the spring pocket. Gosh, look at that. I wish we had your old springs we cut. Hey, look at they that. Were, they were to yours. so much smaller. Does it that. bounce like if you drop it? I'm not dropping that. If I drop it, we'll have to buy a new concrete. You definitely should. Oh, Damn. how heavy is it? Super heavy. That's a deadlift. Squats. Yeah. <laughs> this bolt head is so caked in old grease and dirt. I can't even get the socket on it on this side. Look. Oh, nice. Toothpaste. Yeah. There you go. can't help it. It's just like his mother. Yeah. Got to take care of Ooh. Why do you like cleaning stuff like that off so much? Uh, I like gunk the most. Yeah. I think I'm going to take the motor mounts loose from up here. Especially on the this side over here. This one on the inside is basically impossible to get to. And I'm also afraid that if I take it loose down here that these studs are gonna hang up when we try to drop the cross member. Where these just go straight in. I know they won't hang up. You got a hell wall? Yeah. Oh my gosh. What idiot put this engine in tight this down so tight? I'd like to give him a piece of my mind. That will not come out of there. All right, last one there. So now we have to figure out a way to support this engine from the top so that we can take the motor mount bolts out completely and the engine not fall out from under the vehicle. That would be useful. We have that support that we've used before that's supposed to go on shock towers, but that um, is actually got really short legs on it. So well, maybe, maybe we block put, it or yeah. something? So Walk it up and it looks like we have some extra cylinder head bolts here We could probably put a chain around here and pick it up from here I wish we could get farther forward, but these go up these floorboards go straight up from there So it really wouldn't be a great place to hook it. All right, this guy here Maybe. Like that That's about as far forward as I can go This is a leftover of our building here Okay, that should work, right? Yeah don't you think? If we can get the chain tied enough, it should work. Yeah. Hook it on the very end. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh. Where did that go? Who knows? Don't worry, we found Ralphie another bolt. I hope we're not losing this one. So I think the way we're gonna do it is hook it one on each side and then try to crank this guy up. Okay, this is starting to pick up now on my side. Maybe this will work. Oh. Tell me when it takes the weight off of them and you can wiggle all those bolts. That's probably good. Okay. Want me to take this one out? If you can. I'm trying to get the front one out now. There's just no way to get in there good. There you go. Motor mount is completely separated from the engine right now. There you go. Right there? Well, just a little more. That's probably good. Was it wiggly or no? I'm about to sleep. 
Oh yeah, it's loose. There you go. The engine is not supported anymore from the bottom. Well, that worked out better than I thought. I didn't think it was going to be that easy. I don't know. Well, we should be able to take the cross from route now. Let's see if these bolts come out without any grief. That one did. It's got four three-quarter bolts up under here that appear to be all that holds this thing in. I'm actually surprised the bolts are coming out that good. Yep, there you go. We probably should start some bolts back in the oil pan so it doesn't fall off with it. Very be careful. Careful's my middle name. No. <laughs> it's Raymond, sorry. Oh, hold on, let me get to cover. Are you going? Ready? Yeah, I'm waiting. Your sisters have already cut out all this. Said they had homework. Please. Give it a little bit. Oh, up there. Rusty. Yeah. This sounds oily and that sounds rusty. Honestly, it might just like level itself on here. The lift if you yeah. came down enough. Why is it offset on the frame? Uh, I think to give room for the driver, his feet and stuff. Because oh, yeah. it's already really close to my feet, you know? Yeah. Alright, let me see if the paint will drop out now. Sometimes you have a job that you think is going to be awful, awful, awful. I dreaded it for so long and it was easier than I thought it was going to be. What's the lesson in that? Don't Pay procrastinate. somebody else to work on your cars. That's not true. Oh. That's not it. Don't procrastinate. Just get your stuff done. <laughs> Can this not come out because of drag link? I think you need to take that just like all the way out. This brake line's clamped over here. That's what's getting me. Okay. Is that all that's holding us? Oh, this guy. Okay, oil pan fell off. Lower the jack all the way down, please. All right, that's good right there. I see rods and cranks and stuff. Yeah. We should have took the dipstick out from the top. Well, there you go, Marge. There's our oil. So where are you leaking from? See, I, most of what I saw leaking was coming from this area right in here. It was running down there and dripping off these bolts right here. There's that lock washer I was missing. Right there. Well, at least that did unbolt. If it wouldn't have, we would have had to pull the engine out. We had good oil pressure and everything, so I'm not really worried about bearings or anything. I mean, it looks fine. Nothing looks out of place. No. Cause right in here is where I kept seeing it. See our rear main seals underneath this cap, you know. Oh. Look at our cross hatch. It looks very nice. See it on the bottom? Oh yeah. Looks really nice still. Let's see if we're gonna be able to use this one again cause it's a rubber one or if we need to replace it. Well, it's really tight to the block at the back where I RTV'd it. Look at that, it broke already. Gonna be a replace. Let's see, does this one peel off or does it break? Ah, I broke two. Okay, well, we're getting a new gasket, guys. Best one money can buy. Because <laughs> this one's just breaking all the pieces coming off. <sighs> I'm worried about when we put it back in, if it'll leak. Well, I'm super worried about that. That's why I've been scared to do this video. Who yeah. wants to fail in front of 250,000 people? <laughs> uh, should we just RTV like the gasket all the way around? Oh, that's what I'm thinking we should do here. And then do it on the outside bolts also? Yeah, just Everything. the whole thing. Yeah. It needs it. All right, guys, this is where we're going to call it for tonight. It's baby bedtime. I'm going to have to order an oil pan gasket, it looks like. Maybe like a gallon jug of RTV. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Hi. What? There's a cam load broke off. What? I'm joking. That'd be so unlikely, it's crazy. So we did get a new oil pan gasket, a one piece rubber one for a Dodge Magnum. But then I got home and did some research and figured this out. This is the same exact gasket you saw that we used on this motor before. And we have a 5.9 Magnum block but we have the original 360 LA oil pan, which this pan will bolt up to one. But if you notice these notches here where it cuts in, this gasket does not do that. And I found an old Hot Rod Magazine article that says you're not supposed to use this gasket with that pan. Then I was like, great, I'm gonna have to go back to town. And then I remembered that we didn't use the one in our rebuild kit for the Gremlin here. 
So I actually have two sets of the factory oil pan gasket, and I guess that's what we're gonna use. So this guy is gonna go at the back back here, and this guy at the front, you can see it has the notches there. Well, hopefully this will seal up better because of our gap right there. And I guess it's possible that it could leak out there and run down the rail and drip at the back. I don't know. I really wish the problem was back here because then it'd be like, oh, that is definitely what's wrong. So we gotta clean this pan up and we're gonna clean that block up and it's gonna take a minute because I wanna get it right. So let's get started on that. Well, after a long time of working on this, I actually pulled the oil pump and everything off to get to it. And I've tried to clean back there as good as I could. Tried to get everything out of there. Cleaned everything with brake cleaner. Ralphie wasn't a bit of help. Well, I just wasn't there. <laughs> no, they're back from school now. I guess it's time to go ahead and silicone this thing and stick it back together and hope it works. Woo! Is that the silicone? Yeah, what do you think about that fancy That's stuff? That's crazy. I've never bought one of these before. I just hope it doesn't like dry up on me, you know? Well, use the whole thing. You don't have to worry about that. So I got the pan completely cleaned up as well. My plan is to just coat everything with a thin film of this block and oil pan and just try to hopefully seal this thing up as good as possible here. It's like cheese whiz here. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. That's weird. I'm going to go around every bolt and everything here. I hope this works. Yeah, me too. Put a bead across this front here. So this guy offsets to the inside, like this right here, and it has little pins it goes into. I wish the rear was the same way, but it looks like it goes into the main cap. So then we got our cork gaskets here. I really don't like these multi-piece gaskets. I've always used one-piece gaskets, but with there being a difference on the pan, I feel like I need to try this at least. There we go. Now let's go put the other half in the block. I do like this aerosol. It gives you like a more controlled application yeah it's nice okay this appears to be able to go either direction best i can tell i'm gonna glue that in place there stay i'm gonna do the same thing with the block normally i would think this is a little excessive i really don't know what else to do i tried it the way i'm used to doing it and that didn't work gotta put the oil pump back on that's a good step i just want a really good shot at that rear seal uh, percentage that this is going to work oh. 90. I hope so. Okay. I'm gonna say 85 percent. Uh, what's your thoughts? Who? You. Oh, you know me. It's probably like 30, 40 percent chance oh, it works. No. You know me. I'm always skeptical. I want it to work so bad. We put so much time and work into this thing. I just want it to work and be able to use it. Are we gonna see if it leaks before we put all the? Yeah, I'm gonna let it dry overnight because it's supposed to dry overnight. Well, 24 hours. We'll test it before we put it back on. It says to assemble it and then let it sit for a little bit and then tighten it down. I've got to get this in past the spray on. We gotta do this without hurting our gasket. <clears throat> Come on. I believe in you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a tight fit. Yes, it is. I did test and these bolts are not bottoming out in the block or anything. So that wasn't our issue. It wasn't like a torque issue. We definitely gotta be more careful with this gasket because it's just cork. You know, you can crush a cork gasket. That rubber one has metal shims in it that, you know, stop it from being able to be crushed. This one does not. You can see the silicone squish out in those corners. Just wanna get loose first here. It has like reinforcements at the back here, at the back two bolts, which you would think would help all this to seal up. Did we ever find out like what really caused it or is it just a guessing game at this point? Just guessing game what you want. So I'm just barely snugging these up here. Like the instructions say, I'm gonna let it tack up and then we'll put them like actually all the way down there to that. I don't know what that does, but that's what the instructions say. I gave it my best shot again. I can see it kind of squished out a little, so it looks like our rear seal is still in the right spot. That is all I know to do, guys. While that's drying, we're gonna work on some other things. We're trying to figure out if we have keys that actually lock all these things because you don't want to pack your vehicle full of stuff and then not have a way to lock it. Oh, is that supposed to come off? I don't think so. So this key fits it though. So we do have the key. I don't know how this is supposed to work, but I think it may be broke. Do we have door keys? Oh, we've got door keys. 
Oh, shoot fire. We got door locks. We're golden. I mean, we could lock that from the inside and then lock these with the key. What are these other keys for, you reckon? I'm not sure about that. I love that we still have a motel room no. thing on there. I'll never take that off. Never. While I was looking for the bushings to get the wipers working, we bought new bushings. Tried to install them before and were not successful. Well, I could put the ladder on it or I could hook up the power to run the refrigerator going down the road. The way this is set up, it has power in the back back here when it's plugged into the wall because it has a converter, I think it is. Is it inverter or converter? I think it's a converter. I think it's converter. But as of right now, when it's going down the road, we have no way to turn on the inside back here. Like our 12 volt power, like our lights inside and our refrigerator. So I'm going to try to wire that up off of our battery. So we'll have this going down the road. Here's our setup. So this is our 12 volt power system here, which currently only runs off of this 100 amp converter here, which gets power from our 110 volt system that goes back there and plugs into the wall or into the generator. So I'm gonna run a second cable to this power side of this 12 volt fuse box and that way it can have power anytime the van battery is hooked up. There's really nothing in this system that pulls a lot of amperage. Like we got LED lights and I believe this refrigerator only pulls like one amp when it's running. So there's really nothing in the system that pulls a lot of amperage. I'm sure there's fancier ways to do it where it like automatically switches back and forth between the two. But since I don't have an engineering degree, I got this battery shut off from Rec Pro. So if you go to Rec Pro and use code SleeperDude, you'll get 5% off your order. They were very instrumental in this project actually working out. So this will allow us to turn on power from the van battery to that 12 volt fuse block whenever we want it and then shut it off when we're running off the 110 volt converter. Find some of the moldings. Yeah. Looks like some of them are in rough shape. Yeah, they are. Straighten it out, squeeze. So this is some six gauge battery cable that was sent to us in the fan mail. It looks like it's gonna be perfect for powering that. I think that'll work. That's plenty long enough. That's longer than our RV is. <laughs> All these go along the bottom of the van. So why don't you try to figure out the order on them. I think one side has them on them already and the other side doesn't. Does it look like it's gonna work? Maybe. Yeah, I think it might work actually. Okay, so this goes here and that goes there. So we just need to get some screws and some sealer, I guess. Glue it and screw it? Yeah, glue it and screw it. I'm gonna put a new end on this with a 3 8 hole. I'm gonna try this crimper here I've never tried before. See how it works. Never used this style. Oh man, look at that. That's real deal right there. That's a waffle maker. I'm gonna put this liquid nails on. It's not really sealer, but it'll work. We're trying to keep the water out from getting up in there on the wood and junk, so yeah. I'm gonna drill a hole here to run our cable down through the floor. I got underneath and made sure we were good to go on where we're drilling it. Okay. You just gotta hold it up, like push it up here. Also. Walk, can you feed that cable off that hole to me? Yeah. I'm gonna pull. Just enough that I need. I, I don't need a whole lot of it. About there is good for me. Okay. So there's a block under here that holds our septic tank up. And we gotta take that out to put this trim piece in. And then after that, we'll put it back in. Well, it's been an hour trying to tighten our oil pan down. Woo! Give it its final torque here. Say our prayers, huh? Yes. Well, see, it squishes a little bit more. It's kind of scary. Afraid I'm gonna mess it up. I'm gonna go ahead and swap the oil filter out here. Oh, look at that. That's something you gotta really watch for. I ruined my first engine I built right there doing that. So the seal stayed on the block. And Good little buggers. I didn't catch it as a 16 year old boy. And I just threw the new one on and double stacked the seals, blew all the oil out of the motor on startup on a brand new motor. You gotta make sure I put oil in this thing before we start it, okay? <laughs> yeah. That would be catastrophe right there. She gonna 
packs her car, apparently. You got it clean, ready to go? Yep. Now I've just got to route this cable all the way up to the battery on the van. A lot of RVs have a house battery, and I looked at doing that, but we're very limited on space. We could have probably got a lithium battery and put it under the sink somewhere, but we don't have enough room for a decent sized battery that would run it for a long time. So that's why I didn't go with that. Here, why don't you get this and put it up there, and I'll get this thing. There you go, chili bowl. This thing's gonna be so legit. Too legit to quit. Right. Do you think there's any other RVs like this body style that have had this much work done to them? That weren't nice when they got started with, you know, like we started with a rough one. I don't think so. My best tip for you with an RV is like, buy one that's in great shape. <laughs> that's my best tip for you. And park it in the drive. There you go. One nice thing about building all your own sides is you know everything behind it's solid. Keep pulling it forward. We're gonna have extra, that's for sure. Well, I'm gonna take this hanger off because we have an actual one and not a hanger. Are you telling me a coat hanger is not an actual hanger? Well, that's what you said. There you go. I just hate to get rid of this. You know? Nice as it is. And we did a really good job on this. You did that? Yeah, I did that. I thought somebody else did it. No. I didn't know you did it. That's my handiwork. We might should like hang out on a wall or something, you know? Make a trophy out of it, something like that. We gotta cut the old bracket because the new one is a little short, so we'll just bolt this to that one and make it work. Here's your first exhaust hanger install. Yeah. It looks good. I've routed our battery cable with the rest of our wiring up on the inside of the frame, fastening it to the frame here with this little clamp you do so it doesn't rub. Some thick metal. That way it doesn't get against our casing. So none of these moldings like that are factory. Obviously somebody has added these on, but it's just what we have to work with now. This would have been like a factory molding here. And obviously around these windows and stuff, that's factory, but all this like this is just something somebody's installed. I'm gonna cut our cable there to length and I'm gonna mount this switch probably right over here. So all this will be hidden once I actually install it, but that's how it looks from the back side. So obviously power coming in, power coming out. Red means it's not connected. Green means it is. That's all there is to it. Something like this right here. I think I'm gonna screw it into our beam. Should give us a solid, easy spot to get to. Put some more clamps in here to keep it tied up out of the way so we can actually use this as storage in here because basically everything in our RV needs to be storage. Right, Marge? Exactly. After we wormed it up through everything, I really didn't have as much left over as I thought I was going to have. Oh, yeah. It barely ended up being enough after we went through everything. Well, we're going to unplug this thing so we have no power on this system. Oh, no. Oh. Where did you go? Come back to me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Where did that go? Oh. That's like worst case scenario. I don't see it. Well, I didn't find it anywhere, so I had to go find another one. By find, I mean steal one off of another one I have on the shelf. We'll just solve that in the next time we need one, huh? Yeah. That's what you want to do, like, just push your problems forward so you just deal with them later, you know? Instead of solving it right now. Now we're hooked up there. Well, here goes nothing. We're connected to the battery. When I turn this on, it'll send power to that. And hopefully it doesn't back feed power into the converter and mess something up. Hey, 
So now we have 12 volt power from the van battery while we're going down the road. That's or, crazy. Or honestly anywhere, anywhere you didn't want to run your generator or converter or whatever. Now we should have a working refrigerator from the van battery. Yay! We do. As long as we have a hot battery, we'll have a refrigerator and freezer. Obviously, this would kill your van's battery if you let it sit forever and run off of it, you know? Yeah. But we're thinking of more just like while we're traveling down the road, only using this or really short situations, you know? Because we have a generator, you know? And honestly, I think the way this works, if we turn that on and plugged into the generator, we could charge our own battery, I think. Like if we had a dead battery on the van, I think we could start up that generator and charge our own battery. So a funny story here, when we put out our video the first time we drove this, as you can tell, our Lowe's magnets that are made for a house don't really latch good in here. This one does a little better, but pretty much when you're going down the road and you take curves, this comes open. And the people at Rec Pro watched the video and was like, can we please send you a better magnet for that? So they sent us these magnetic latches here that are designed for an RV. It comes with a little washer guy that's countersunk and some screws. And basically that little washer sticks to that, which I think we may be able to use our ones we already got. Oh, yeah, we can. It should just be a matter of changing these magnets out for their magnets, which are better than ones for a house. Because most houses don't go down the interstate at, you know, 80 miles an hour. Or take turns. That's true. <laughs> yeah, these just aren't as stout, I guess. This one only has one screw. It's a really simple install. We just gotta make sure our distance is right on this. So it looks like right about there. All right, let's try it. Oh yeah, look at that. It wouldn't even latch just a minute ago. Okay, well, that was a really cheap and simple upgrade. It's funny they got so disturbed by watching the, the cabinets flap in the wind. I bet a lot of people did. That's probably a big deal to you, Marge, isn't That's it? That's so much better. I'm excited. <laughs> She's already got her cooking utensils. She's bought new cooking utensils. She's so fancy. Oh, my gosh, I ain't fancy. We got the battery switch done now. Oh, you're really worried about never reading that again, aren't you? Yeah. All right, we got the magnets for the cabinets done. I really can't put that top trim on either, so I guess I need to do the ladder, huh? Yeah. Well, that's gonna be it for tonight. It's getting late. We gotta let this dry as well. Did you get your car buffed up a little bit? I did get my car buffed up. That's good. Yeah. That's good. You gotta keep it shined up, those single stage paint jobs. We'll see you guys tomorrow, and hopefully, we have fixed our oil leak. That's what we're hoping and praying for. Shoot. Was you being bad the whole time we were gone? I bet you were. <laughs> morning. Me and Papa are out here this morning. He's got his coffee. I don't even drink coffee, bro. What's up with that? Mom's ruined y'all with coffee stuff. I came down here early and got the pieces out and tried to figure out how all this goes, so. It's been like, I don't know, over a year since we got this from Rec Pro, and I've lost the instructions and everything, but looks pretty straightforward. I think we're just gonna have to cut it down because our RV's not quite as tall as the ladder. That's what we're gonna do, right, Ralphie? Yeah. It's gonna have to go on this side because if we put it on that side, we have a generator right in the way. And we don't want it right in the middle of our window or our backup camera. So it's gonna have to be on this side. I guess it's gonna start from right there. And these are like little hinges to let it pivot around these corners. I mean, you, you can't go to Talladega and not have a ladder to get on the roof watch the race. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right about here is where it needs to hinge at, Ralphie. Ralph, this guy goes up there, something like that. Woo. So we're gonna have to cut a bunch off, aren't we? Yeah. Like that right there. So we gotta cut a couple feet off this thing. What is that, like 10 and? 10 and a quarter. Uh, it's, it's more like 5 sixteenths there. Okay, 10 and 2 eighths. Are you trying to get me there? Yeah. 2 eighths, that's a quarter. It's the same thing. That's what I was trying to do. That is not nice, Ralphie. Good morning, Wa. Good morning. How are you? I'm great, how about you? Good. She's actually the morning person. Of the whole group. Yes. Believe it or not, I don't have to wake any of my kids up for school. They all get up on their own, which is amazing. Well, actually, you get up and wake them up, right? I, I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning every single day, so. <laughs> I got a schedule. That's better than I did when I was a kid. My dad would have to pull the covers off me and put a wet wash rag on me to wake that me up or like something. That squeeze right there. Yeah. 100% squeeze. 
That's actually aluminum. Here, Ralphie, here's your exhaust pipe. You can use that for some small engine job. Now, did you measure twice and cut once? I just, actually, I didn't even really measure it. I just eyeballed what? it once. Yeah. What do you mean you didn't measure it? I eyeballed it. It'll be and fine. You have cut that perfect little piece of ladder. <laughs> So we actually have more than enough steps. It actually came with one spare step there. I guess if Mamaw's foot goes through it, you got a spare. So we're actually gonna take a step out. This guy's gonna come off here, and then we'll cut this one. Cutting another one? Yeah, we're gonna cut Why another one. Why you gotta one. cut that one? That's the right length for our van. We gotta. I, I think you need to double check his mess. How about I could mount the bottom half and then make double check, huh? That's probably a better idea. Thanks, Papa. <laughs> Sitting over there by the heater, sipping uh, coffee. Sipping coffee, yeah. <laughs> With his dog. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got these stands that you can put wherever you want to on here. You just gotta drill some holes here and there. And that's what helps support it. We have four of those guys. It would only make sense to put them right there. About there? Yeah. This pin needs to be at where the body curves, right? This pin. Got to help, Papa? I do. So we're using some one inch screws here. Here you go. It says it's ready for 250 pounds, so as long as I don't gain any weight, I should be fine. What's the distance to the outside of that? 12 and... You better measure that yourself. 4-8. <laughs> <laughs> Half? No, it must be 3 or something. That little line right there. Okay, we need that to be the same out there. Right there. Right there? We're good? Okay. So, mm -hmm. I gotta put a screw through this. Oh. It needs to be like that far off of there. If I did cut it before, I would have cut it long, so that's good. That's better than cutting it short. So this actually needs to be cut right about there. Why does it not send any sparks? Because uh, aluminum does not turn like orange when it gets hot. It just cuts. It can be completely liquid and still not be orange. That's weird. Man, you're gonna have all kinds of exhausts. You'll be ready to build something. Oh yeah, that, like this is like the basis off of the whole build right here. We'll have to get a frame, <laughs> and we'll have to get an engine and everything. Good morning, Squeeze. Do you have any advice for us today? Um, if the light is too bright, go back to sleep. That sounds awesome. I second the motion. Let's see if I cut it right, Ralph. I'm ready to go camping. I know, right? We've been ready to go camping for a couple years, huh? Well, out of all this RV stuff we've done, we've actually only spent two nights in an RV? Yeah. Was it, was it two I or three? I think it was three, I think it was three. Something like that. Dad, What? you need to hold on to something. You're gonna fall. Oh, sorry about that. I will, I will try to hold on here. You break it to monkey toes gripping. It will here. not come here. undone. You ready? You ready? All right. Oh, oh. Mm. Yeah! Ow. That <laughs> it, it like went straight in the Oh. Here. If I hadn't built this entire RV, I'd be worried about hitting a wire or something, you know? Yeah. We seriously have rebuilt like almost everything. Yes. And the thing is, it looks so old. <laughs> on the outside. Yeah. When you get to the inside, and it's like, Wow. Would you look at that? Would you look at this? We gotta screw our stands to the roof up here. Of course, we're gonna have to seal around this when we get done. We'll take this right off. We'll bring it back out of the way and get the other screws in. I'm gonna put three screws in each one. It's got three holes here. So that's how it works there. I don't have this screwed in yet, so I can tilt this out of my way. You can see our roof's got really dusty in here, so I'm going to take these brackets back off now and use some of the Rec Pro self-leveling sealer, put it under there, screw it back down, and then caulk around it, and then screw it down for good. 
And we're also going to seal around these down here. We want this to stick. Last thing I want to leak it right after all this work. If you go to sweetpotato.com and use code SLEEPERDUCK, you get 5% off your order. Woo! Yeah! Woo! This is their self leveling sealer. It's made for the top, you know, the roof. We just want to line up our screw holes in the same spot. And this is obviously going to squish out some. At least we know it will be sealed up. Hey, this thing's so legit. I know, right? And this does not stick up as high as the air conditioning unit is, so we're good on our height with it. Who's going to try it out is the question. You tried it out. I ain't trying it out. <laughs> This is the real test. Oh. How stable does it feel? He's, he's nervous now. I'm nervous. <laughs> you got this. We've had that ladder for so long. Yeah, it feels super stable. Okay, cool. Well, get off there and I'll try it out. Oh no. Yeah, feels good to me. It's just awful. <laughs> oh, there's a lot. Trade's a lot, Bob. <laughs> is that a lot? Bold? No, it doesn't have to be. No. I think it's a 92 inch universal ladder kit. Let's put our spare back on and move on to something else. Okay, you don't have to get on top there. You're good. It's approved. Squeezy approved. Yeah. Well, this is one of our last pieces of trim we have to put up here. I'm just conking behind it here, trying to seal everything up as best we can. We do have two more pieces to do right at the front of the cab here, but I'm gonna wait until we get off the lift to do that. We got all that installed and conked, and we went down through here and conked all that. I did the same thing on the other side. Went all down through here with that. Now this is not even a factory piece. From the factory, it appears this was squared off here. I think they were trying to get more fuel efficiency out of it. When we got this thing, it had all this paperwork talking about fuel economy and everything else. So they claimed it got like 10 miles to the gallon. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and try to straighten back out some of our little, what are these, awnings? Yeah. Is that what that's called? What's that called, a visor? I don't know. So it went above all of these windows. We have all of them. Unfortunately, they're in really bad shape and some of them got ran over. So we gotta straighten all these out. We might use the old anvil, how about that? But I'm gonna spend some time straightening these out. I think I'm gonna jack it back up and put a heater under this oil pan so that we can maybe rush this process a little bit of drying. We're gonna let that heat all that up really nice under there. That ought to speed things up, huh? I hope so. Yeah, we got the ladder done. He loves marking things off the list. Yeah. Oh, that thing's heavy. So we got Papaw's anvil here and the V-board one, and we're gonna use them and some dollies and some body hammers and spend some time hammering on these. See what I'm talking about? Like these edges and stuff are all screwed up. They're really flimsy, actually. I'm sure they're not factory, but it probably helps keep the water out. We got them pretty straightened out here, I think. What do you think, Ralph? Is that good enough? Yeah. Some of these are really, really rough. I'm honestly surprised that we have all of them still, considering how long it's been. They're so flimsy that they're a little curved still, especially the longer ones, but I think we'll go one screw at a time and kind of bend it and straighten it up. Yeah. Woo! Is it cooking? Yeah, it's cooking. It's cooking over there. Oh yeah, that's probably a couple hundred degrees right now. I think we gave it enough time now. Surely with it getting heated up like that, it's good and dry. It's been almost 24 hours. I guess we all we have to do is put oil in it. I'm going to start it while it's hanging from the chains. I've never done it before. All right, here goes nothing. Man, I hope this works. I do not want to deal with this problem anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it was just our mismatch on our pan gasket, maybe. We got five quarts in it and a new filter. I guess it's time to start it. It's scary. Y'all better be praying hard, kids. Pray hard. We're praying hard. Seventy 
I don't, so far I'm not seeing anything. But it did leak a whole lot more once it warmed up. I think it blew a bunch of rust out of the back. 70 pounds at idle. That's crazy. We'll just let it run and warm up, see what it does. I don't see any like exhaust fumes coming from my weld. That's so. good sign, isn't it? Yeah. What are you doing, Granny? I don't see it dripping from the pan rail. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Did we fix it, you think, Granny? I mean, I'm not seeing drip. It's got to be better. Yeah. We were even getting drips pretty consistently on cold, you know. When the motor was hot, it was going, you know, it was almost a stream. It's really weird seeing an engine running with nothing supporting it from the bottom. I think we may have fixed it, guys. I see it's already off the pipe. That's what was already on the pipes because the pipes never got cooked off because it constantly had oil on it. But I'm not having any drips at all right now. It would have definitely dripped. We're, we're almost up to operating temperature. What's the coolest temperature, Ralphie? 150. It's got a 160 thermostat, so yeah, I think we fixed it. Woo! That's a good feeling. Yeah, it's not dripping at all. Shut it off, Ralphie. Oh, that makes me feel good. Yeah, I went back and forth about whether or not to put a rear main in it because I didn't feel like I could do a better job putting the rear main in it from the bottom with the crank in the motor still, you know? Yeah. Like, I did the best I could the first time, so. Apparently it was just my oil pan gasket, so. Maybe it was that mismatch with the pan gasket, but it was leaking at the rear, not the front, so. I don't know, maybe I just didn't get enough sealer on it at the corners. I think we've got it fixed. Awesome, woo! Now we just have a bunch of work to put all the front suspension back in it. Look at all the little knick-knacky things we've got done, I though. Know. I know, it's coming together. I think we only got two pieces of trim left to put up right yeah. here. Get our wipers working, we just got a few things left. Granny fell asleep standing up over here. Granny, hey Granny, hey Granny. No hearing at all. <laughs> Let her sleep. Everybody thinks that her ears like got cut off. No. It's from the factory. They don't have ears. But oh, I don't know how they pick so. up on sound with no ears, you know. Well, but. they probably weren't good the first 10 years of her life. Yeah, you know? yeah, when you're 37 like her, though. <laughs> I guess let's start putting this thing back together. Woo! Woo! While all this is out, I might as well tighten up my exhaust, right? Uh, it's probably good. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's going to be really hard to get to. Yeah, like a bite. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So sweet. She's getting big. Okay. I don't think she's really soft. What about with the gloves on? She know? She know it's me or not? No. Are you going to be nice now? Are you going to be nice? Okay. Maybe I'm safe. You're going to have to wear gloves all the time. Yeah. Alright. Let's set up on the lift. Oh, my God. It's so heavy. It's a little heavy. A, li a little? Oh, that made me feel a little Here, here. Go up. I'm going to hold this arm, by the way. Does it look tilted to you? factory. Right, that's on the back side. Oh, slow down, slow down. My side's already touched. Oh, that makes right. sense. Go up. Right there. Yeah, about. Right there's one. Go up just a little bit more, Ralph. There you go. There he is. I think that pig. She's running piggy. She's ripping it. Get that bolt in. I'm just gonna get everything loose on here. I haven't tightened any of these cross member bolts yet. I just want to be able to wiggle everything around so we don't have any. Yeah. It makes it a whole lot easier to do it that way. Now this one looks pretty far off. It's wacky way off. Maybe it just needs to be pushed. Oh, look at that. That helped, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Just push that rubber mount a little bit. It has a little flex to it. I do think you're gonna have to let this side down some. If you'll get up there and lower this side down about a quarter of an inch. Yeah, keep coming down like that. Is it still got pressure on it, you think? There it goes, right there. Okay, that's good, bud. That lined up pretty easily. <coughs> I 
Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, look. All right, we got all of our motor mounts in. Tighten our crossover back up here. That was very convenient that this unbolts. All right, Ralphie, you can loosen it from the top. It's supported now. She's gonna eat my trim. She was chewing on the trim. She's just checking it out. You got it all unhooked? Yep. Watch out, watch your wires, watch your wires. So this tool right here is very handy for stuff like this. We've used it several times. Now I just gotta call it suspension on. Yay! And this is when we had a church event we had to go to and Law's driving me there in her beetle. Trying to teach her how to drive on the road safely. Ween, you hungry? Got some leftovers for you. Here you go. There you go, girl. Recycling. Yes, he does eat more than just RC Cola. All right, next day, life is crazy around here. We're all the time having to head out of here and go something we, you know, signed up for or whatever. We gotta put this beefy spring back in, Walt. Where's Ralphie at, Mom? He's fishing <laughs> in the pond. What is he at? That's all yeah, he's is. fishing. Are you sure you don't want to lower it? Last chance. No, we need all the rooms. All ground hearts clearance. and minds clear? All hearts and minds clear. We went to Yellowstone. I remember ground clearance was like an issue for us. A lot of those pull-offs on the side of the road are a big drop-off. Sketch. Go out, just barely. Okay, or on the floor. Okay. okay. Let it down. Stop. Okay. <laughs> Literally nothing I'm saying is happening. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All, right, all right, go up, go up. We're getting close. A little bit more. Okay, I should be able to get the nut on right there. Are the fish biting? No. You ain't caught nothing yet? No. How's that pole working? Pretty good. So he's sitting on a chair on that dock down there. He told me he was going to go sit on the dock of the bay. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I guess that's the bay down there. That's hilarious. <laughs> a little tiny pond. It's funny, he goes through like phases, yes, of what kind of stuff he's, like there for a while, it's like small engine stuff all the time. Sometimes it's fishing. Sometimes uh, it's bicycles. Yeah, you uh, never know with him. Baseball. I knew you'd be picking at that stuff. This is ridiculous, look at it. That's called like 50 years of grease and dirt Ew. combined. Ew. I'm just glad we didn't have to replace any ball joints or anything. Our brand new shocks, we're putting them back in. I actually spent the money on these shocks. I think they're called Magnum shocks. They're actually made for an RV. Because I didn't want this thing swaying in the wind with Marge behind the wheel. Exactly. Yeah, you know, like a Dr. Dre video. <laughs> here, here, we got to push it back up. Oh, why is it so hard to push up? It's a Magnum shock, son. <laughs> no wonder. Okay, there you go, I got it alone. What even happened? I don't know. You done something? Everything's already bolted up. I guess the spring just settled all of a sudden. Shaw, right? The dog won't pull back in. Like I got off to get a weight out of here, and it won't pull back in. So it's like ten feet out. So how'd you get in? You had to get in the water? No. Yeah, I got off of it, and then it. So is your well, fishing pole and everything out yeah. in the water? <laughs> is there no rope attached to it? There is, and it, you pull it and it don't come. <laughs> so I had to just swim over there or something. It's too cold to swim, no! <sighs> Team lift, Marge. So our ball joint is spinning instead of tightening up, so we're gonna have to put some pressure against it from the bottom. And see, that cone shoves up in there and hopefully it'll lock it in place. That may have been what we heard. That ball joint may have popped up into there farther because the nut was actually up higher on there when I got in here. That's the way to do it. You gotta put pressure on the ball joint to get it to stop spinning. So all of our old grease is now dirty, obviously. So we're gonna clean all that off, replace it. Cotter pin back in. Now that shouldn't back off anymore. 
all of our bearing races and everything look good. We put the cap on this to make sure it didn't get dirty or anything. Grease this back up. This is just something you don't do on new vehicles anymore. Everything's like a sealed bearing that not much you can do but replace them. Can't grease them. We got all our stuff here in a bag that we took out. That's a really big outer bearing for what we're used to. Usually the outer bearing's not very big at all. And I'll put some extra grease in the cap. I always like to do that. I don't know if that's the right way to do it or not. It's just the way I always done it. You know? Are you supposed to put grease on this? Yeah, you put you want to coat that in grease before you put your brake pads on so they don't squeak going down the road. <laughs> Tighten her down and then back her off because you're better off for all this stuff to be a little loose and a little tight, just like building a motor. Something like that right there. A little loose will run forever, but a little bit too tight, it won't make it around the corner. There you go. Like I said, put a little grease in the cap on this one. Give it a tap around the edge, Ralph, not in the middle, okay? Good job, sir. Got our brake pads from 1974 here. They are really easy brake pads to swap out the way they work. Simple system. All right, guys, I think I got all this. Ralphie, do you want to let the jack down slowly? I want to put a front rear sway bar on it. I feel like that would make it better as far as, you know, driving with the wind and stuff. Because it has no front sway bar. I know the van that we stole the power steering pump off of, it had a sway bar on it, but it was like from the 90s or early 2000s. I don't know if that would bolt in here. I looked online and I can't find like one you can buy really. I feel like that would help. A sway bar and like a steering stabilizer shock as well. All right, let's do the other side. Can you help me uh, get the dock? Like... <laughs> So all your stuff's on it out there in the middle yeah. of nowhere? All right, let's go get it. I'm gonna get my crop boots wet. Oh, no, oh, good. Here, oh, it's not pulling the boat. It's pulling that other tree over there. Now let's use the tree to pull it back. How about that? I tried that. Yeah, but yeah. you were trying to go too fast. There you go, bud. All right, well, have fun, Papa. Bye. Don't worry, we'll get the RV to go. Okay. <laughs> That's <thin. laughs> I thought I was a life father. <laughs> <laughs> Catch a big one. I'll try. Watch them crock boots now, Marge. You don't want to get your spurs muddy. <laughs> so you cleaning the old grease off this side now? Yeah. It was really dirty. Golly, these things are heavy. You kind of got to get this bar here in before you get the knuckle in place, really, because it goes underneath all that. You think Ralphie's floated out to sea by now? I was just thinking that he's probably out there and can't get back. <laughs> Well, at least he knows how to swim. I made a point to make sure all of my kids know how to swim. Did you catch anything? No. No bites? It's probably too cold. The night stalker over here, she's undercoating some of this wood and stuff. Oh my gosh. Because she did this before, but it was out in the gravel one and you couldn't see everything. So. Yeah, I was laying down trying to do it. She's undercoating all the back side of all of our plywood that's exposed. Just to make sure it's all good to go. Come on, come on. There you go. All right, Wall, did I get everything back on there? Yes. You think we're good to go? Uh-huh. We might need hoops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We might need that. <laughs> go, girl, go. Hold on, wait. I need to get a Maybe good Maybe bounce it or something. We ain't bouncing it up. <laughs> You've got this. Yeah. Jesus, Lord. It's so heavy. Why is it going to be so heavy? <sighs> Tell you one thing, your brother wasn't a bit of help. He's slacked off today for sure. Oh, it feels good to have this back together. I'm ready. What are you ready to do? Camp! Woo! Why does it have like a rotary symbol? Oh, you're getting it. Oh, wait, you had to do it before. Hmm. You didn't need the people's elbow on that one. The hand hammer is not working. Are you getting it? 
I'm going to get it. Oh, I thought I had it. Yeah, that's it. She's Woo! karate chopping and people's elbows and everything. You didn't ninja kick it, did you? Yeah, I'm not hitting it that hard. <laughs> I need to put that trim back on, really, that we hammered out there. I wish I could get my wipers working. Can't do that, No. Nothing. Nothing. Itchy? I'm finally putting our little visors back on everything. They've been off a long time. Here, hold that, Ralphie. Okay, so that guy goes right, right there. Maybe it'll keep the rain off our heads when we look out to see what the neighbors are doing <laughs> at the campsite, you know. It's only like two inches like wide or something. Yeah. I'm glad that's going to hide a little bit of that ugly up there. Yeah, definitely going to help for sure. You kind of have to straighten out as we go because these things are so flimsy. This one's my favorite because him's little. Oh yeah, a miniature window. Was that the old bathroom or something? I don't even remember now. It probably was. Oh, I think it was the bathroom. The old oh, RV no. had a little window at the bathroom. Did it? Yeah, it did. I remember that. Good times. Did it have a seatbelt in the bathroom? I don't know if it No, I didn't have a seatbelt in the bathroom. Oh, could you imagine like strapping yourself down going like 90 on the highway? <laughs> I don't think these were factory either. You don't think so? No. I, I could be wrong, but I just don't think they were. I think this is like trying to make the windows stop leaking. Oh. And they didn't want to probably pull the windows out and do it right like we did. Remember it was actually wrecked in this corner? Oh yeah. yeah. And it had been repaired before. This is all full of Bondo right here. Yeah. From where it got hit. How are you wrecking that corner? It's it's probably back into a tree Ooh, or something. Ooh, it had to have been a tree. Or a canopy. They were probably oh. looking behind them but weren't realizing what was above them. We're going to have to do this one screw at a time from my end. So you just keep it off the glue right now. Okay. See how curved it is? <laughs> like a nanner. It's straightening out. That's not bad, huh? It's not for me. You, you didn't think it was going to look that good, did you? When no, you saw it in like a banana peel? Yeah. And we already had the holes there. Might as well put them back on, huh? Right. Can I a multitude of sins? Yeah. Really, after we did all this, after I was like totally done with it, I was like, you know, it would have been easier to put new metal on the outside and just start over. Yeah, I think that might have been mentioned at some point. It would have probably been easier to do it that way. I'm going to try to take these wiper arms off now so we can finally fix our wipers. Hopefully. Where did that go? <laughs> you this <laughs> Look, you can see where I tried to take it off a million times before and couldn't. That one, that little ear is kind of funky. I may have to work on that. I nearly died right there, didn't I? Well, maybe we can get access to put these bushings in now. See, we got these bushings off eBay. Tried to put them in the last video and it didn't work out. Okay, now we got some access. See, we got our electric wiper motor here, which we don't know if it works or not. It's got these plastic bushings and there's only one that's still hanging in there out of the whole group. Is this the second one? Oh, we got two that are hanging there. But the ones that are actually attached to the wipers here are not hanging in there at all. Hopefully we can pop these guys in, some freshy boys, and fix our issue. They gotta go this way, right? You're just agreeing with me, that's all you're doing. Exactly. I'm sure there's a trick to this that I just don't really understand. Because you can't get your pliers on the back side really, except for off at an angle. Like that. You can't just squeeze it like this. Maybe if I put a socket on the back side and then squeeze it, that might work. So I'm going to try an 11 16 socket on the back side. I know I put some other bushings in this way before. I think we're getting somewhere maybe. Oh, there you go. That is so much harder than what it should be. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to take the wiper motor loose to get to the other one. I hope this is a good wiper motor. It's pretty, oh, oh, oh. wow. It's pretty easy to change though, it looks like, if it was bad. I should patent this move right here. It's probably never been done in human history. Come on, work with me, Brenda. Ooh. Almost. 
There we go. Now, can we get it to pop onto this pin here? That almost looks too big. Surely we got the right size bushing, right? Come on. <clears throat> I don't know if that's the right size, guys, after all this. Not wanting to go at all. And it's plenty enough force to get it on there. Yeah, if it ain't going like that, it ain't going. Oh, did it go? It doesn't seem like it's far enough on there, but it feels like it's stuck. That's all I got. Okay, we'll see. I'm gonna try to turn them on. We don't even know if they work. Are you ready, Ralph? Yep. Did you do anything? No. I hear a noise. Did you hear that? No. <laughs> so we don't have wipers even? No. So why don't we have wipers, I wonder. Is the motor bad? Maybe. It's plugged in. I heard something there, did you hear that? Oh. I bet our motor's bad. Let me check it for voltage. Okay, we have 12 volts to that pin, and that pin. Nothing there, and nothing there. Okay, let me turn the knob. Right now it's on, let me turn it off and see what happens. Hey, okay, now that it's off, no power. We do have power there. Nothing, nothing. Apparently our wiper motor's bad, because we have power, but it's not doing anything. Okay, I'm gonna have to probably get a new wiper motor, it looks like, guys. I don't know if it should turn like that by hand, but it's not. I guess we got more issues than just the bad bushing. I'll leave this off until we get that fixed. Rain X it is, I guess. And uh, now I'm moving on to the air filter. Although this makes a ton of donkeys being down here. We can't be going down no gravel roads and dirt roads like that. So I got this cheap air filter from the parts store in the last video, and it was the wrong size. And the rubber was super hard, so I figured out if you get to like 250 degrees, it starts to soften up. This is a two and a half inch to three inch adapter. This will fit that. I am going to put this in here like this, and we will hose clamp that there. And then I think we're gonna cut this off. Obviously this can't be out in the weather. So we gotta find a dry place that's hopefully somewhat cool to put this so that we can get not hot air because air density is important. Watch Gail Banks' videos. Air density has a lot to do with how much horsepower you make. So you want cold air. There we go. This lift is like, I'll be glad when you get this big girl off of me. <laughs> up and down, up and down. So really our only place to put it out of the weather is like right here. That'll get it out of most of the heat and the water. Can this fit in there? Barely. So if we put it like right there, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. We just need to cut this guy off. This is like from NASCAR, by the way. It's basically a NASCAR motor on now. Cut it about there. Yeah. It's crazy. These will turn any corner without kinking. It's really incredible to me. It's really great for like a ram air setup. We may have to make like a piece back here. It looks like it used to have like a rubber piece that hangs down. So we don't want to get a bunch of water off the hoops going on this, right? Yeah. So that'll slide right over that now. And now we'll have filtered air that's in a much cooler spot than on top of the engine. Yeah, I think that'll be a much better option than what we had before. Right, Walt? Yes. I've been tracing things down, trying to get the blower motor for the heater to work, and I may have found a solution here. Let's try this. On one of our main fuse boxes, I was thinking it turns on with a key, but it actually turns on with a toggle switch, so we may not have power. Do the wipers work now? No. They're not doing nothing, are they? Oh, I don't think so. All right, no, what about the blower so. motor? Oh, yeah. this is working. Okay, so. We should have heat, still haven't figured out the wipers. I guess it was the motor. So we do need to plug this off because it's getting air through there. Ralphie, that's like a five eighths. Can you get like something to plug that with? What about that? Oh, okay. Touche, sir, <laughs> touche. <laughs> I guess that'll work for a while. Here's our well insulated dog house. You can go forward. It's kind of tight because our seal is really thick on this. Thicker than stock. So we're gonna put our last two trim pieces on here. Squeeze is relaxing inside in the heat. So that's good for her. <laughs> These cap over right here. So that one goes on the flat. This one goes this way. Once again, this is not a factory molding. This is something somebody's threw on here. 
But you kind of got to put it back when it covers up a lot of ugly. Is it side to side good? Yeah. How's the heat work? Good. Pretty good. Is it good? Is it warm? Yeah, it's warm. Yeah. We hadn't really tried it. We tried the air, but we hadn't really tried the heat. I think this yeah. is my favorite car. This is your favorite? Yeah. Oh, wow. I guess we're ready as we're ever going to be. I reckon. All right, let's try it out. See how she does. Help me off this lift. I'll try. Hopefully we don't tear the mirrors off of it coming off of here, huh? Yeah. Tell me if you hear glass. Honestly, couldn't believe it fit on the lift. I am super close to mine. I think it might hit. Just past mine now. I'm gonna try to cut it that way. There you go. It <laughs> better. That's great. That was by the hair of her chin 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 if I ever seen it. I topped off the power steering fluid because we had a little bit of a leak there. Oh. Ralph, you wanna fix that mirror for me? What you need me to do? Grab it both hands like this and turn it. There you go, there you go. More and more. Look at that jewel. All right, get buckled up, guys. Oh. Come on in, Mom. The we water's need to, fine. We need to latch his door. Oh, yeah, it's latch like that door from the inside. I think I've rode up here. You haven't? No. 70 pounds of oil pressure, 43 pounds of fuel pressure. According to the gauge, we're completely full on fuel. It's currently learning that it needs more fuel. Is our power going? Yeah. Uh, so the the 12 volt side, yeah. I have interior power because I, okay. if you want me to start the generator, I can turn the heater on back there. No, they're fine. All right, here you go. No backup plan. <laughs> See how this goes. It's like a cloud. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, like we're riding a cloud. Like riding a cloud. <laughs> Hopefully, our trees aren't too low. Oh. I need to trim them back, I guess. It is close to eating time. Do y'all want to go somewhere and eat? Ooh, yeah. let's go, let's go, yeah. let's go. It's not very like wiggly wobbly like the like old RV was. Yeah, the other one was bigger. And you know it's creaky also. Oh yeah. I've been waiting for this. With any big vehicle, it's a little floaty. Like I said, I think that sway bars would help if we had some of them. Seems to have plenty of power though. <laughs> Pulling a big hill here. So far, our transmission's been awesome. So the Holly is learning while we're driving. Right now, it's pulling 8% of fuel. And the more we drive, the better this thing should run, like we talked in the last video. I love having the backup camera, too. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Because it's all the time. It's like yeah, I wired it up where it runs all the time. So it's like having a rear view. You know what's funny? The people behind us don't even be watched by five plus people here. Yeah. You hear that noise? Our fan shroud isn't quite exactly right for this. We use the 99 Durango fan with the uh, factory 74 model shroud. They don't like to play well together, so we're gonna have to trim the shroud back a little bit. I think what happens is the motor comes up just a little bit and hits the top of the shroud when you're accelerating hard. Well, the engine's like not solid mounted, so like it should move a little. I'm gonna try to turn the heat on here. Is it working? I think I feel it. Oh yeah, it's blowing heat. We're good. Nice. All the amenities of home. Who needs a house? Yeah, we'll just live in here now. Hey, I might move into this thing, y'all. It's gonna be like, y'all gonna see me one more in the afternoon, I'm gonna be gone. So we'll drive off to nowhere. See that current learn percentage there? That's where it's taking fuel away. It's probably doing that because the last time we drove it on a long trip, we were down one cylinder and didn't realize it. And it was adding fuel for the extra unburnt oxygen. We're going about 60 right now at 2200 RPM. So where are we gonna go eat at? Burger King. 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 Last time we were killing all the mosquitoes while we drove. I don't see any smoke coming out of our tailpipe that Ralphie and Wawa installed. 
How do you like riding back there, Mom? Uh, it's okay. It's a little floppy feeling, but it's yep. not too bad. You think you could drive it? Uh, probably. <laughs> Front end seems to be in good alignment. I mean, you know, that's not the ultimate test, the old dad test of letting your hands off the wheel, but, you know, it's a pretty good test. I heard a little bit more fans around there when I accelerated. Whoa. I hope I didn't hurt anything. it worse the more throttle you give it so we're definitely gonna have to trim on that it'd be easy on the throttle we cannot let marge drive i'm really thinking waffle house yeah i'm thinking i'm, I'm thinking, thinking i'm thinking waffle house or wendy we that is Wendy's favorite place to eat well, well if we do waffle house we'll just have to eat it inside yeah yeah, yeah. okay i guess waffle house i think we'll waffle, waffle house, house. Yeah, let's go to waffle house <laughs> they do have a good burger they do have a good burger every power line i see i'm like oh is it gonna get Get our rope. I'm not used to driving tall stuff, you know. Right. It's driving nice. Power steering's good. I do smell it burning off a little bit of oil. I don't know. I think I spilled some over here though when we were filling it up. Right, and it had a lot to burn off anyway from before. Right, all down the exhaust, yeah. Maybe when we get out, we can check for a leak, you know? Yeah. I might all turn the CB on where we can hear what the traffic is up ahead, you know? Yeah. It's so fun to finally drive it. Doors are staying shut. That's nice. We're getting it sorted out. Yeah. Why do you like the Waffle House so much? Cause me and my mamma go there when I spend a night with her, and we and we I eat hash browns, and she'll eat like a burger or something. Do you eat waffles? No, I eat hash browns. Just the hash browns. Yes. Do you put ketchup on your hash browns, squeeze? Yes. 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 A lot of ketchup. It actually is pretty quiet in here considering it's an old motor home. Like I don't hear a bunch of wind noise or anything, which we shouldn't as much work as we put into this. Oh, power lines. This is scary to me. Oh, we're passing another RV. We're not alone. Hey, let's give him the RV wave. Hey, how you doing? He didn't wave back. <laughs> it's staying steady at 153 degrees, which it's like only like 40 outside today. Not bad at all. I see the sign, squeeze. Pulling up the promised land. The nose is really short. It's like deceiving. It's really not even probably any bigger than our truck. Really. It feels like the whole back's like shifting whenever yeah. you turn. Yeah. I don't see any oil dripping anywhere. Good deal. We fixed it. I can smell it. You oh. smell what, the Waffle House? Yeah. How do you friends. smell it? I don't know. Out here. They make like such good food. Thing. I think we're good, guys. It like fits at the parking spot. I told you, it's not really any bigger than our truck. It's it only looks, 19 feet. It looks so goofy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Finally, getting to go to Waffle House again, huh? It's been a minute. Everybody's in here today. There's no seats. T Tiffany. Yeah. yeah. They have the best waffles. They do have the best and Cracker Barrel has the best pancakes. Yeah. <laughs> the best pancakes so we came out here to look at it while they're cooking our food. And Ralphie said there was a leak with the power steering. This might help here if I would have put the lid back on this before we left the house. Probably every time I turned it sharp, it spit fluid out everywhere. Yeah. So that'll help. I think the fan's getting into it right up here. See, this blade comes in contact, I think, with this shroud. We're just gonna have to do some adjusting on that. This is leaking antifreeze right here. That's factory. You gotta get that butter on them waffles immediately, right? Immediately. It's already warm. <laughs> exactly. I just love going to those fancy restaurants where they cook in front of you. <laughs> is it everything you dreamed of more? It's the best. The best ever? What surprises me is Ralphie can put away some food. He eats more than you think he could eat. Like he'll eat a hamburger and a side and then eat your food. It's like crazy. He's growing. He's growing boy, yeah. You driving back for me. You better if you want to pay. <laughs> Was that good? Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's get back on the road. She cranked right Woo. up for us. Woo! It's so funny because it looks in here like it's big, but when you look at it from up there, it's little. So mom's making me stop by the pet store on the way home. 
Because <laughs> she has another new pet and she needs some supplies for it. So yes. Its name is what, Raymond? That's what you, that's Raymond. What you named it. Uh, we got Raymond the turtle. Mom's gonna get some stuff for Raymond. Oh, he was hauling that. Oh, two truck cabs on a trailer and flipped. Oh, man. I can see the past and the future from here. Alright, there you go, honey. We're here. Oh, there she goes in her happy place. Y'all go in there and make sure she don't spend too much, alright? This plan's gonna work. For sure. I've been worried about this for months. With this oil leak and this thing. I really, really didn't want to pull the engine again. And thankfully, we were able to do it the way we were. It was a lot of work, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Just to like have working heat and a ladder on here now and all of our trims up. This feels so nice. I told him to watch, make sure you didn't spend too much. Just a little bit. Okay, what well, you got? Heat lamp? Yes. Oh, they got a cold blooded, ain't they? they are. Just like you. Do you need to go anywhere else, boy? No, home it is. Uh. Cozy? Yeah. Might as well stretch your legs, right, Marge? Yeah, let her eat. There you go, that's overdrive. 2,000 RPM, breaking the speed limit. Overdrive makes any old car so much better. Ready to go on a trip somewhere? I'm ready. It's a lot better than I thought it would be. It's, it feels safer and like it's going better. Like I said at the beginning of this, we're wanting to go camping, maybe while the kids are off school for a week. So we're gonna try to figure out somewhere, not too crazy far away for our first trip here. We really don't wanna repeat what we did before with the last one and just take off to Wyoming or whatever. I think we may be taking this one on some shorter trips. Yeah, get some miles on it first. Yeah, I really don't wanna be stranded in the motorhome again. It's gotta get better mileage than it used to. The old owner said it got like 10 miles to the gallon with a carburetor and no overdrive. So with a fuel injection and overdrive, it's gotta be getting better mileage. Yeah, we're good for 11 or 12. At least. Their bellies are full. Now they're gonna be asleep before we even get home. Uh, it looks like we're gonna make it back home, which uh, the Waffle House is not a short stint from our house because we sure. live in the middle of nowhere. She's done good. She's done spot on. We get back home, I'm gonna check the transmission fluid while it's hot. This transmission's actually been modified, so you can check this one in park. You don't have to have it in neutral like a normal torque flight. In the back of my mind, I'm worried about the rear wheel bearings on the inside, because I replaced the outers, but not the inners a couple years ago, and I've always wondered if the inners were bad. I really don't know. I'm gonna see if they feel hot or anything. But I don't hear any noises. It's like riding on a cloud. It is like riding on a cloud. Here we are. Yay! No problem at all. That's awesome. It's funny how all the test drives have gone good ever since we put a not stock computer in it. Right. I mean, this thing's got new casings. Like, literally everything on this thing has been touched or replaced. We have put so much work into this thing. She good to go. Oh, we got a package, Mark. Oh, yeah. I forgot about our hand already. That's funny. We need a longer dipstick. That's how you do it. Oh yeah, if anything, we're over full. It doesn't feel hot at least. The drum don't feel hot. Man, it's looking good out here in the sun. With all of our trim up now. There's so many things we've done to this thing. We got our outdoor water deal we put in, generator, our LED tail lights. We put every window in this. We just did everything. Our ladder looks awesome. I think that's going to be a nice addition there. And check this out. We got this Blackstone grill from Rec Pro a couple months back and never used it. And we are going to fry up some Vainas for dessert. <laughs> We're basically full right now, but are you ever too full for Vainas? Exactly. It runs off one of these little propane bottles. Oh, Look at that. Look at it. Probably should turn it down. Golly, I'm toasting it, ain't I? <laughs> Crack it open. Let's throw one on there, Ralph. You ready? I think give it the open juice. It. Open it all. We haven't done this since we were at Ford Fest. Oh! Oh, wow. Aggressive. Wow. Smells good. Smells give good. me that sweet RC Cola. Oh, Man, we feel like campers wow. right now. We may be in oh, our own yard. Good. We feel like campers. Get those over there. We might need to put some RC Cola on there. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
cook it with RC Cola. Oh, that would be nice, huh? Mm. I'll give it a little bit there. Yeah. Mm. We've just created a new recipe, guys. <laughs> guys, if you've followed along with this RV build from the beginning, we appreciate you because it's been a ton of work to get to this point. A long road. Yeah, and like every step of the way, I'm like, this just ain't going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen here, but it's not going to happen. Basically, projects like this, if, if we hit a big wall with something, it's like a lot of times we're really under the gun to try to get a video out, and it's not always possible to work on something for a week or two solid. It's complicated is what it is. But we really appreciate each and every one of you that watches our channel. Big thank you to Rec Pro as well. Without them, this would have not happened at all. Please go check out RecPro.com. Use code SLEEPERDUDE for 5% off your order. Also, big thank you to Holly. The Terminator X really saved our butts on this yeah. one too because we had pretty much no luck out of the Mopar computer. And remember, even though you've just had a meal, there's always room for an RC cola in a vein, you right? Yeah. But hit me with that, Ralph. What's this? No, I don't need a fork. Look at that. Steaming, guys. Steaming. Does it cook good? Yeah. Perfection right there. We're good. Some. Go for it, Squeeze. Mm. Warm? That's so good. It is, isn't it? I this a long time. Rare oh, footage. Oh. Uh, uh. Go for it. Not bad. Mom, go for it. Oh, my God. It's good. It's really good. Like, way. Like, they're good heated up like that. Just keep it. You'll eat it. Oh. But we appreciate everybody that likes and subscribes and comments. All that helps. We appreciate all our members. That really helps as well. Membership just gives you daily updates on what we're doing that day. And also it gives you priority status on the comments because it's basically impossible to answer all the comments anymore without hiring a team of people to do so. We do all we can with it, but we can't get to everyone. But you can check out our second channel app. Sleeper Dude 2. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Sleeper Dude 88. You can check us out on our third channel at Sleep Sleep it Armed. Yep. Future videos, we are going to get on the Ford Fairmont Futura big block oh. twin turbo car. That's the plan. Oh. I know, right? Me and Ralphie have literally been waiting like seven or eight months to do that. Oh. Everybody's asking about it. It's like, believe me, I want to get on it more than anything. I absolutely love turbo big block cars. I basically haven't raced a turbo V8 car since 2020, so I'm past due on that. We really do want to take a trip in this thing somewhere soon. Hopefully in the next couple weeks we'll get to do that if everything works out. We just got to figure out where we're going to go. I'm not sure yet where that's going to be. We better save a couple for the animals though, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, pop them in there for them. A little to-go plate for them. You guys have fun riding it though? Is it fun? Yeah, it's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's nice, I guess, to get to lay back there, huh? Yeah. Squeezy said yeah. it's her favorite vehicle now. Is it your favorite? At the beginning of this video, you were like, "Oh, I don't really like this thing," but now you're it's coming around, oh, huh? Oh. Yeah. It's really nice inside though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's it very nice. It's deceiving on the outside with its patina and stuff. Well, I guess let's go see the animals. See. Uh, all the goats, new goats we got. There's all kinds of animals around here. Mom's been getting animals left and right lately. But she's just living her dream out here. Woo! Oh, yeah! Adrian and them's laying around the hay bale just hanging out. Look at all these little short spotted goats you got. <laughs> That's what she loves. Murphy. There's Rocky and Rocky Jr. Murphy. He got sprayed by a skunk a few weeks ago. Here, Murphy. Oh, you want a wing? Oh, they're still warm. Oh, yeah. Hey, buddy. Is that good? Huh? Yeah. Look, there's flower. Rocky. Hey, Rocky. There you go, Rocky. There you go. Rocky's getting a little ornery in his old age. Look, look. There you go. There, buddy. Oh, it's my finger. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, Adrian makes some funny noise. Here's the new goats right here. This All three of them. George. George. George, George Jones? I got George Jones, and I can't remember the girl's names. I just got George. Okay. Hey, There's a little he, chocolate colored one there. Yeah. Look, he's hey, Rocky, big. You? Hey, buddy. You have to help more often, Rocky. Huh? Yeah, hey, I'll be good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tackle. Whoa. Tackle. Coming in. Hey, whoa, whoa, buddy. Slow down. But Vanya's pacing over there. She's oh, yeah. pacing. She's ready. Doing? We didn't forget about you, Vanya. At least you haven't been running away lately. Can't be running away like that looking for your boyfriend. Why is this little white goat the one that always comes over here? Why are you always the one? What? Look, it's just a camera. That's all it is. You want to see it too? Okay. You throw a ball and they'll run after it. Yeah, just like a dog, aren't they? I don't think people realize how much like a dog they are. Yeah. He's just like a dog. It's unreal. Yeah. And remember, Jesus saves and dog gentles are every seven miles. Woo! Who cut the cheese? Man, it's been a long time. 
Bye, doggies. Oh, oh, right there. Right there. He can get sick kicking. Is he fast now? Oh, he's fast. He's fast. He's on you. George Jones, you're so sweet. Oh, 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 oh we thought he was oh. sweet. <laughs> Calm down, buddy. Murphy has drugged the water hose around his house around over and over. Around the barn. Yeah, all the way from up there. I bet it's got 10 holes in it, too. Yeah, it's, oh, it's yeah. useless. Got my <laughs> lead rope. Murphy, you got to be better. I get him a toy like every time I go to town. He's got all kinds of toys whoa, out Whoa, whoa, every time you go to town. He needs toys. You got to get a budget <laughs> line item for this, okay? He needs toys. We need a envelope for Murphy's toys. Play with your toys, buddy.